As we said, you will hear from folks who are changing things all around us. The idea is when you hear these people talk, you will feel a need to be part of what they're doing or you'll feel inspired to do something of your own. So it's, again, welcome everyone. Thank you for those who are just joining us and thank you for those who've been with us thus far. So we'll move right along. The theme of the conference is the future is us. Everyone you hear on the stage will be proposing or advocating things they are doing to actually make that a reality. Our next speaker is Shegun Akin Olubade. When I first came across this gentleman, I was intrigued by what he set out to do. What he set out to do is to make something that's very complicated really simple. Simplify it such that it's something that anyone else can do. Without much ado, I introduce you, ladies and gentlemen, to Shekun Akin Olubade. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm here to talk about the design and development of a car called the Anti Dow Sports Coupe. I'm building this car in my backyard. My backyard? Really? Yes. Why am I building a high performance sports car in my backyard? First of all, because I'm inspired. Ever since I knew what to do with a pen, and my brother will will uh, attest to that because he's here. I, I drew in everything I could draw on, including his homework, including my mom's documents, and she went to court to present uh, cars just because I had uh, messed everything up. But um, really, I've really, I've had this passion to develop cars in Nigeria, and I said to my aunt, I hope she's watching, that I was going to manufacture cars in Nigeria. So, the question has always been how, because I'm sure you know that the average car has about 30,000 parts at least, if you go down to the last nut and bolt. So this is a very complicated prospect. So what kind of car can we actually build in a country like Nigeria? And this was a question that burned my heart for quite some time. In 2008, a very, very sad, uh, sad occurrence. Um, a friend of ours lost his life. Um, this young man, Dauda, was a, an epic sportsman. Some of his uh, records still hold at our alma mater, at Israel College. And um, it really, really dawned on me that I had to go and do a car for him. So I went with his brother, and I said, what sort of car can we do for Dauda? And he said, it has to be a sports car. Dauda was a sportsman. So we design, we, I designed this car. When I was done, I put hang on, fiberglass body, a tubular steel chassis. Now a chassis, just think about your skeleton. That's what a chassis is to a car. That's what everything hangs on. Um, and engines and gearboxes that we can bring in from other manufacturers. And I thought, hang on, we can build this car in a garage. And if we can build this car in a garage, we can build this car in Nigeria. So I decided to get to work. And the next question, why am I building a high-performance sports car in my garage? Because I can. And I'll tell you just how. So we said that we're going to use fiberglass, uh, fiberglass body, and we're going to use a very simple chassis structure. So either get a donor chassis from an existing car or build one ourselves. We're using a donor chassis for the that we're building now, and we'll use uh, a chassis that's developed for us for the final car, the production car, rather. So we will also use off-the-shelf components, engines, gearboxes, electronic systems. Before you start saying that, hang on, you're going to build us a car that's already been manufactured. There is no manufacturer in, this, in, the, in the world that makes its own gearbox. And many of them are sharing engines. Many of them are sharing, uh, well, actually, I'll tell you what, there's one manufacturer that makes all the electronic control units that control the engine. So we actually, in the automotive, we're used to sharing components. So SC Automotive will do that as well. So we'll then set down to sculpt a body in an interior in the of Paris. And this is where it really starts to get interesting, because we can now bring our own cultural question 
what will a car that we design look like? So SE Automotive went to a, a, a business incubator, and we put together a prototype, a quarter scale design. And we first of all started with a Paris model, a mold out of as the same that we used to decorate our ceilings, build all these beautiful ceilings. And then we fiberglass that, um, that uh, plaster of Paris mold. And this is what came out. So this is your SE Dow Sports Coupe, although this is just a quarter scale prototype. And at the moment, we have now decided to take it a step further and start building a full scale car. In order to do that, okay. In building this full-scale car, we have brought in uh, a donor vehicle, a vehicle which we will strip down and use the chassis to build a prototype. As you understand, we need to get this prototype out quickly, so we don't want to get ourselves busy with building our own chassis. That means that we can concentrate on making sure that this beautiful car, this beautiful SE Dow Sports Coupe, can come out in a short, shorter uh, period of time. So, when we have then sculpted the interior, we have that spray painted as we had this spray painted by any local spray painter. Um, and then we can have the interior covered in leather and materials that are locally available. And this is why uh, this, the talk that just went before me is very interesting, because we have a lot of rich heritage in our dressing in this country. And we can start to incorporate some of that into a beautiful African interior of a car. So we now have created a car in Nigeria in our heads, a car that is desirable in appearance, and a car that has an ambience that speaks of our cultural heritage. So we now know that it is possible to build a high-performance sports car in Nigeria. Unfortunately, we had some technical issues, so I, couldn't, I cannot show uh, the videos. But that just starts to speak to the need for technical development in Nigeria and the fact that if we start building these, this kind of car, it may not be what is needed by the people who need mass production, but it is what is needed by the technical aspect of uh, building cars in order to start the investigation of what it takes to actually build a car. So finally, I just want to ask this question again. Why am I building a high performance sports car in my backyard? And that question is really sim simple to answer. And that answer is because we really need to. One of the reasons I came home was to inspire people. I was in school in England and um, I decided to move back to Nigeria to do this project. And on coming home, I've run into a number of people who are car designers, but they have no outlet for their passion. And I ran into a young man who is now on my team who designs cars to the quality of Coventry University. That's one of the best design universities in the world. How did he do this? He did this by studying, studying tutorials on an internet cafe in a faraway town in the middle of nowhere in Nigeria. That speaks to the fact that we have passion, we have talent, and we can do what we want to do in Nigeria if we tried hard. I'm building this sports car in my backyard, and in the next year, it will be complete, and we will drive this car down the road, and that will be our pride. Thank you. Applause for... Now, I'm sure like most of you, you were frustrated by the drops in sound. So I'm going to take time out to ask him a couple of questions to fill the gaps that you might have missed. So again, what, now from what I could gather from your talk, this is more about anyone who's willing to can take something, their passion, they, the passion they've always had, work on it, make it simple, simple enough so that in whatever environment they're in, they could actually do something about it. Is that correct? That is correct. You see, um, when I started doing this work, one of the first things I realized I need was automotive styling clay. That's not available in Nigeria. So I made a few calls, and I spoke to one of my lecturers that said, look, plaster of Paris is still a very great modeling uh, material. And um, in Italy, 
and Italy makes the most beautiful cars, you agree? Um, Italy still uses plaster of Paris to sculpt their cars. And I looked around at my local building store and there was a load of plaster of Paris in there and I was like, can I have it all? <laughs> so that just speaks to the fact that you need to start using what you have around you. I think there's a word for that, they call it improvisation, no? So tell me, I don't think uh, I can afford this car. When can I hope to get a much be uh, cheaper version, something for the masses? That, the, the vision of SE Automotive is to be the name for African design, African developed, but cars which are uh, internationally available, which cars which we sell to everybody in the world uh, by 2030. We want to be that name but we need to get there through a process. Every, uh, a number of people have come out and tried to develop uh, cars from scratch and mass market them in Nigeria. A number of companies have attempted this, some have assembled, others have uh, had to start and abandon projects. And we're thinking, how can we simply get something started? So we need a small number, and we need that small number to be profitable, no? We need to then look at what we can generate profits out of sm what we can use to generate profits out of small numbers, and that is the top uh, of the market segments. That means that as we make profits, we can then invest, reinvest those profits in mass production infrastructure. So, what today you're doing this? When do we hope to see this in some some financier's backyard? Well. In a financier's backyard. Because um, those are the folks that can afford it, right? Yes, yes. Um, within the next year, within the next year, we, in, we expect to take giant strides in building this car. I'm building this car in my backyard because Nigeria is a challenging place to do a project like this. So we are looking at a situation whereby from showcasing the uh, vehicle in, an ave in avenues like this, we can get exposure and people can start to see what we're doing and actually not just see that they need to support this, but they can also start to see that we can build things in Nigeria and then it doesn't become so crazy when you get up and say you want to build a car. So I'm actually looking forward to hearing about the guy who wants to build a plane because we can actually do these things here and it's, it's not that strange to say we want to develop technically in Nigeria. Thank you very much. Again, a round of applause for Mr. Shagun. Thank you.